Last week, you and I saw a TikTok, uh, and I can't remember who sent it over. Someone sent it over to you, but it was of a online coach mastermind group um, that actually was staying at a short-term rental, and he was posing it as his own house as he was doing the walkthrough. So. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution Podcast. I'm Girl Sean Moore, and we're back with a Whiskey Wednesday segment with my main man, Mr. Dave Savolich. You've been off for a little while. We, we oh. had to record a couple to get uh, get caught up, but you're back in action, man. Yeah, I was gone for a week. I was at uh, on a houseboat in Lake Powell, Utah. It was nice. Nice. Your, was, your annual oh, Lake Powell trip man. kind of disconnected, but this yeah. time you guys had a Starlink, so you were kind of yeah, connected. We had, How that was that? Like, Because sometimes it's nice just to be completely disconnected. I, you know, every year we go, we hardly ever have service, and it's actually kind of nice. It, the kids never have service, so that's even better. Yeah. But – uh, somebody that was with us brought brought one of those Starlinks, and that thing was pretty amazing. And uh, you know, you just have to yeah. be disciplined just to check your emails like once a day or whatever. Yeah. And it was actually kind of nice to have a little connection, but yeah, yeah that 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 thing's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's and, awesome. and the best part about it, we sleep under the stars, right? And I didn't see it, but my wife woke up in the middle of the night. And she saw the actual the satellite, satellite. Yeah. go by. I yeah. guess it was pretty awesome i told her the next night i said you see that wake me up i want to see it up. there's a few of them up there, there yeah, yeah you'll, you'll notice them so, circle in the sky so that's yeah, awesome it was cool but. awesome well guys we'll get started these are our short sweet to the point episodes we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in our world which we kind of did a little bit with what yeah. uh, you getting back off vacation some short-term rental topics hot topics in the what's going on out there in the in the uh, in the news what's going on you know kind of staying up to date and then also we answer some questions that you guys send in so as a reminder if you have questions email us at support at vodacy.com or post them in the comments on whatever platform you're watching or listening on and we'll make sure that we do answer those so dave what do we got what's on the hey, agenda uh, today? by the way uh I'm not that techie of a guy, but I get the old. I iPad like it. Today. I like it. We got. We're good. We're Makes going it from, official. We're moving official. away from the paper. You hey, know, if, and, if uh, we're going to be on the internet looking yep. at stories and looking yep. at things going on, we need to have something we can look yeah. up. So I appreciate that. And you it's know? it really it makes us more official. Yeah, so yeah. I, I like I, that. I like that idea. So um, so let's dive in. So TikTok, um, you can see everything on TikTok. It's kind of interesting. I, I get most of my <laughs> news from Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that. You <laughs> that's know, where so you're, that's the official where my information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and life yeah, and or, yeah. solving problems Love and stuff. It. But yeah, yeah. anyways. Last week, you and I saw a TikTok, uh, and I can't remember who sent it over. Someone sent it over to you, but it was of a online coach mastermind group um, that actually was staying at a short-term rental, and he was posing it as his own house as he was doing the walkthrough. So I'm going to kind of turn it over to you because I, I thought it was pretty funny. And yeah. I think we should talk about because there's a lot to unpack <clears throat> with kind of what we see online and the reality of what's fact, fiction, and true and not true. Yeah. So this was one of our members, and she's actually a coach as well. And she's a coach in, in a different space, um, works with a lot of farmers and ranchers and helping them with infinite baking and, and that, you know, really financing their farms and ranches and investments and everything else. And so she's in the coaching space, has a book has a has a big community and she said you gotta you gotta see this she sent me over this TikTok, and it's a guy walking around and he said hey you know i was i have this airbnb and really nice property and i had a guest stay in it and then my buddy who has stayed at my property with me and knows my property said sent me this and uh, this ad that was online of uh, this guru that you know so-called guru and i'm not a call him out. He actually didn't call him out either in his, in his video. So I don't know who it is. I have a pretty good idea because I know guys that do this. Um, but he said, his buddy called him up and said, Hey, this, isn't this your house? <laughs> and this ad was this guy selling his course and his lifestyle and his properties. And he was walking through this property and he said, yeah, that's, that's my house. And he looked it up and that was the guest that stayed a couple weekends back and using it and showing that that was his lifestyle and his house and this and that and the other. And so he, he didn't, he said, listen, I'm not going to call the guy out, but you know, it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of shameful that you're selling, you know, courses, coaching, everything else, and then posing that you have this lifestyle right. that that's your that house you, that you've never done. It's yeah. your house. It's your portfolio of stuff. And, right. and um, he said, it's, you know, 
I'll, I'll rent to you again. Come back. You were a good guest, but yeah. it's, uh, you know, I'll take your money. It, it's, it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty shameful that you're doing that. And I, I, I got, we got a good laugh out of it and, uh, she sent it over and we were kind of going back and forth, but it, it's really common actually. Yeah. And I'm not here to call people out, but I do always say, make sure you do some due diligence on who you're right. having help you make right. sure that what they're doing and what they say they can help you do. They've actually done, right. make sure they've been in the game for a little while. We've talked about experience so many times on the podcast, right. And saying, Hey, listen, we haven't been doing this for five minutes. We've been doing this for a long time. And we don't mind when people ask us those questions and we have to back it up and we have to show them the, the success stories we have and the members and everything else. Cause it's one thing to go out and, and do this, but I've had, some people that I have personally talked to that I know that are gurus in the space, or, or I should like air quotes gurus, right? Like so-called gurus, they're, they're self-proclaimed gurus um, and selling courses and they're trying to make, make some money, you know, being the course coach, consultant, whatever that, that world looks like. I hate the co coaching and consulting world and we're in, we're in it, but I don't like it. And the reason I hate it is because I know too many personal stories of people who actually go rent studios of private jets, right? There's literally, there's literally videography studios that look like the cockpit or not the cockpit, the fuselage of a private jet. So you're sitting in the club seating of a private jet and it's just a studio, <laughs> yeah. right? You can go and they, they have cars or garages with all these supercars in them. You can walk through them and film your ads in those. They're, they're filming studios, right? And people use them for their ads to show this, lifestyle and that they do this and they, they have this. And, and I think it's really sad, really. If it, it shows to me, it's really insecure, right? It's, it shows a lot of insecurity that maybe you, what if you, what if you really do know what you're doing? What if you really have a good idea, but you just haven't quite made it yet? Maybe go do it, maybe go make it. And if that's important for you to flash that stuff and show it off and everything else, and that's your style, go, go build it and have it first. But right. Actually renting those studios seems, it, it, I just, it seems so crazy. To me. Well, and I, I think it's, it's just dishonest. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it really is portraying something that isn't reality. And unless you do your due diligence and you yeah. really dive into it, you just assume that what you're seeing is true and, and factual. And then I, I think it poses the question, like, do you want to work with somebody like that? I, yeah. I would say absolutely not. I mean, I want to work with somebody that's honest, that's upfront, that has the experience, that's doing it the right way. If I knew that this guy's walking through a home and he's claiming it's his property um, and he's, you know, selling a course, I would say, dude, how do I know I can trust you? <laughs> exactly. you, know, you see what I'm saying? That's so, the problem. That, yeah. Well, that's the problem. It, right. What if, what if, what if he tells the truth on 99% of the things, but that one thing right. is a lie? Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Right. So just, yeah, just, just be who you are. I well, mean, if you I, have it, you have it. If you don't lean into it and say, Hey, listen, I'm just getting going. The best part about me is, you know, you, you're, we're doing this together and we're going to yeah. figure it out. And I'm willing to run, run down that road with you. I mean, if that's yeah. what somebody's looking for, they'll, 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 there are people who will like that, right? We have people we compete against that they're, that is what they say. They're like, Hey, the good thing is, you know, we only work with, we, we, we only have five people and we're figuring this out and we're doing it. I respect that a lot more right. than somebody that acts like they have a lot more than they yeah. actually do. I mean, there's just so much fake on the internet. All right. Well, and, and part of what we do here at Odyssey is we have our monthly meetups yeah. so the people can, can interact with us and see who we are in person, have some, a chance to kind of, you know, hang out and ask us questions, learn more about Odyssey. The other thing we do is we have, you know, office hours. And so yeah. we have members that come to our offices. <clears throat> they can see our studios. They can see where we do our work. They can see we have offices. We're, we're a real business. We're, we're set up and, and we invite them in and come in and see this. I think there are a lot of people out there that are doing this from their so-called studio. They don't have offices. They're doing it, you know, by a one-man show. They think that they're bigger than they are. And I think you just got to be cautious, you know? Yeah, you so. have to be cautious. And and more than anything, just look at their experience, right? right? We all started somewhere. Yeah. I started this somewhere, yeah. right? I started it as a one-man show. And, you know, it, with one little studio that I had to have as my office, my studio, everything else, and starting to talk about this and writing books and putting together courses. And but I had also had 13 years of experience doing it, mm -hmm. doing the thing that I'm actually teaching, you know, of short-term rentals. You know, I've got 24 years of real estate investing. And so I think that that's what's more important is when you are talking to somebody, 
experience matters, right? right? It, yeah. it absolutely matters, period. Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. And whether you like it or not, experience matters. And yeah. you're going to, you know, and, and I think that those things are really important to do your due diligence on because it's really, really easy to look really good online on the front end on marketing and everything else. What's very difficult is for somebody when they start to peel back the layers of the onion to be able to answer the questions intelligently Solve. without just like yeah. kind of kind of giving you watered down answers that they've heard or they can find online, right? Having to actually looking at the itinerary of a course and saying, what are we, what are we covering? And if, if one of the lessons is how to go set up your Airbnb listing, I, I would be a little, I would be a little concerned because you can get that from Airbnb. You don't need to pay somebody from that. You can get that on YouTube on how to set up an Airbnb listing, right? And there's a lot of people. So when you start to they look really, really good on the front end. And that's not just our space. That's everything now, right? right? It's everything you do as a consumer with AI and everything else. Everybody looks amazing. And there are people that are willing to do what this guy did and go fake like he has more than he does. There are people who have AI write their books, write their marketing campaigns, do all that stuff. But when it comes down to executing and you need help and you need to figure things out, AI is not going to help you there. Yeah. AI is really good with creative stuff. They're not really good with, with the actual execution of things. And so when you're doing your due diligence, that's where experience comes in. Yeah. And that's where really understanding the game you're playing. And so, you know, it, it's a, it was a funny thing. We got yeah, a laugh we got out, a laugh of, out we, of it. We were, we were looking at it and just thinking, <laughs> but we, it's, we, we got a laugh and then kind of rolled our eyes because it's not the first time we've seen yeah. it either. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's move. Uh, let's talk about amenities in, in RevPAR. So, you know, I've been searching online and, and AirDNA came up with, uh, the amenities that make the most difference uh, in your short-term rental and, and increase your, and boost your rev part. So it, it's kind of interesting. Some of them obviously were ones that obviously we figured. first one was uh, a hot tub, 38% um, increases your, your rev part. Now, these are national averages. Mm -hmm. So in certain areas, <clears throat> let's have a drink. <laughs> let's have a drink. Shit, we can't get you through a I mean? sentence without clearing our throat. Mm. Ah, that's better. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So first one, hot tub. Now again, these are these are averages. So in certain areas, like if you're in the mountains, hot tub's going to be amazing. It's almost like a ski resort. You're you're going to have to have one. If you're maybe in an urban area or something else, it may not be as important. So these are averages. So take that into consideration. The second is a pool. Um, you know, if you're in Arizona, you're in Vegas, you're in those areas. Like you, you're going to want a pool. You, you're going to an Airbnb, you know, an SDR, and you're going to have a pool in that area. The next one was Wi-Fi, super important. I'm not sure you'd want to stay in a property unless it was totally off the grid if it didn't have Wi-Fi, but maybe there are some that, that don't, but that's obviously a big one. Uh, the gym, a gym, in-house in gym, 18% um, increase in your rev par. Cable TV is another big one. I think that's kind of interesting. You know, we have cable TV. A lot of people go into the smart TVs and things like that. I think a lot of people like the convenience of just, Hey, flipping it on and knowing they got channels and they don't have to log in and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It, there is an expense, so I guess you have to decide. Um, then the, the other one that I thought was interesting, and again, this is averages, is pet friendly. Um, pet friendly short term rentals across the country, it actually decreases the rev par slightly um, by having that. Now, there are a lot of areas where it d deeply increases your rev par, uh, like our place in St. George. Um, we have pet friendly rules and we allow pets and so forth. And, and it's been a good thing for us. And you know, like your cherry log, you don't have them there, but you, it's probably not a big deal there because it's set up differently and so forth. So I got a, I, I have a little bit of a contrarian view on amenities and, and looking at these types of lists. First of all, like you mentioned, these are national, right? These are national averages. Nothing is nationally affected across the board in right. real estate. And in our world of short-term rentals, it's very regional. It's very property specific. It's very, very target audience specific on what amenity you should have and how that's going to help you or not help you, right? There are very sp certain amenities in certain areas, like you mentioned, in a ski town, in the mountains, if you don't have a hot tub and 90% of the top properties have a hot tub, that might be an amenity that you should consider, yeah. right? I mean, that because people get off the slopes and they want to sit in the hot tub, right? And it's fun to sit in the hot tub in the mountains in, in the wintertime. Pool in the middle of, you know, Tempe or Scottsdale or Phoenix in the middle of the summer, 
pretty necessary because yeah. it's 100. And, I mean, it was just 120 degrees down there or yeah. in Vegas, right? Yeah. 118 in Phoenix, all time yeah. high. Yeah. Um, you're wanting a pool, right? And yeah. so, but here's the thing. And it's a good question to ask is what amenities are going to raise the bar so that I can make more money? And you have to ask yourself, what, who is your target audience and what experience are you trying to put together? Right. And, and you have to, you have to say, okay, does that amenity add to the experience? I am not a believer that you have to get ahead of the curb on certain amenities. Saunas were a big thing. Saunas are a cool amenity. If that's part of the experience, right. put a sauna in. If you put a sauna in and now the, you know, the geodesic domes that are, you can sit in and the snow globe type things, those are, those are really cool. Now we have a ton of members that have those in the mountains and in the deserts. And, but that doesn't, that doesn't all of a sudden make them more money. The reason they make more money is because they put together a great experience and those amenities are part of the experience, right? And so it's more, what is the experience? Is it a is it an adventure seeker? Are they coming in for the outdoors? Do they want to sit out in the elements in a geodesic dome that you can see through and it's snowing outside? Right. That's cool, right? That's part of the experience. We're bringing the, you know, you're, we're, you're immersing somebody into the outdoor space. If it's a wellness type of a, of a retreat type of a space and you've got the saunas and you've got the hot tubs, that's great, right? Those, those things matter. But when you look at these lists and you say, well, I'm supposed to get a 38% jump in a hot tub. That's really, really misleading. You're, you may right. or you may not, yeah. right? You may just have to have that to compete. Yeah. And you may get a jump in your revenue by having that. But what you get the most jump in your revenue is really curating this great experience for a specific target audience yeah. and really identifying that. And that doesn't get talked about enough. And the amenity needs to feed into that, right? Amenities of theater rooms, things like that. If it's a big family vacation and kids are involved in the theater room is going to be a really cool amenity for that house to have. Maybe you invest in that. It's part of the experience, but it's really hard to look at those lists like that right. that, are, that are printed out. And I know, I mean, people want to see them. We want to see. And th the, the reason I think the lists are good is it gets your mind thinking, hmm, I wonder if that right. would be good at my property or not. But to go and say, I'm going to get a 38% jump just because I have a hot tub, that's yeah. not the case. Yeah. A, you're going to get a negative by adding a dog. That's absolutely not the case. Right. Some Some areas... Pet friendly homes are not that available and they're very desirable and they actually get a big increase in revenue. And so it, it's it's really interesting when you see those things, you just use them to think, okay, what amenity could I add to my property to elevate the experience for my specific target audience? What are they coming to do? And you have to think about the experience includes the, the big profit drivers in the area. Are they coming in for the national parks? Are they coming in for the amusement parks? Are they coming in for the beaches, for the ski hills? What is it? What are they coming in to do, right? The, the area itself, the major, they're going to have major profit drivers. They're going to have secondary profit drivers in those areas as well. Understand what, what they're coming to do. Who are they now? Is it families? Is it couples? Is it adventure seekers? Is it who, like, are they are they big multi-generational families? So now you're saying, okay, well, who's that target audience? What are the main things they're coming to do? Then now, how can my property elevate that experience in, with the proximity to the major profit drivers, with the amenities that I have, with the, you know, being able to immerse them into the local, app, like the, the local flavor of artwork and food and everything else that's going on. And so you, there's all these things you look at. The home amenities are one of them, but it's there's so many other things that you stack along to say, okay, this is how I make it to the top of the market, right? And yeah. so amenities, obviously something, we, a conversation you have yeah. to think about and have to have, but it's more than adding, you know, just if you have a something. struggling property, adding a hot tub is not going to just jump your revenue by 38%. Right. Right? Maybe, the, maybe the pet friendly, the negatives is because of cats. And and the positive is because of dogs. Yeah, for sure. If you if you oh, if you have cats in there, your rev park you're going down. down. Dogs. If go you up. allow dogs, you go it up. That's a, that's why it's. You had a cat out. you love. So I know. You, you, I know. I love that cat. But I, you, you, you liked cat. That's like, for another day. That's a funny story. I could tell you some funny stories about that. We yeah. went and saw a kitten, and next thing you know, eighteen years later, we got a cat. We have a cat. Yeah, he's still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that was, man. Uh, All right, let's jump into some questions. We got two good questions today. So first one is. If you have the capital, do you suggest buying one large short-term rental or would you suggest buying two smaller short-term rentals? Yeah. That's a good question that comes up. Like I have a pool of money. Do I get a big one or do I get a couple of small ones? Yeah. It's uh, one, there's not a, both of them are going to have 
pros and cons, right? And they're both, as an from an investment standpoint, they're probably going to have very similar returns. And so, it's not one's not better than the other. It's what are your property goals? What are you trying to build? What do you want that portfolio to look like? And and if you're saying, hey, listen, the the market that I'm going into, because there are some markets that you say you might say like I'm looking in the Bourbon Trail right now, and we're looking at anywhere from four to about seven hundred thousand, right? What if I have two million dollars and I want to place it? in one property, I'm not going to be able to in that market. So the market itself might dictate that I that I either have to keep it as one or I can split it up, right? If I've got the option to do either or, then I say, listen, it's a lot harder to set up two properties. It's a lot harder to launch two properties. You're doing everything double, right? Yeah. Furnish and get them all ready to go, market two properties. But there's some diversification there as well, right? The, the pros are you've got two properties now that are that are, you know, working and they're optimizing and they're maximizing the returns for you, but the returns are probably going to be pretty similar. Usually in that scenario, when somebody asks me that, it's very, the, the market almost dictates what direction they go. Yeah. Let's say you're going into, you want to buy the ski hill or the beach and you have a million dollars. Well, the million dollars, you could buy a couple condos probably in some of those markets, or you could buy one single family home. In that case, I would lean toward the single family homes, right? Because I feel like they have better long-term appreciation. I can differentiate them a little bit better. There's there's some pros there that I that I like about the single family home situation. And I only have to do it once and I can I can pour all of my effort into really maximizing that asset. But a lot of times it's the market that's going to dictate that for yeah. you based on the average acquisition cost in the market, what you can do with your money in that market. But if it's if it's the choice between splitting up between two, a lot of times if it is a market like I just mentioned, like maybe a beach market where, where you've got homes and you've got condos or sm- like usually usually that's where the I mean, if you're if you're really trying to split it up in half and put it into yeah. two properties. Most of the time you're looking at that scenario, like maybe I can buy two condos or one home. Right. Well, I like I like single family homes better than I like condos. Yeah. Long term. Yeah. And so I like condos. I own condos. I'm not saying I don't wouldn't buy a condo. I'm saying in that scenario, right. that market's gonna probably steer me toward more toward putting it all into one. Bourbon Trail. If I have that million, same million dollars, I'm gonna steer toward two properties because it's gonna be really hard for me to place a million in that market. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Awesome. Next, next question. Last question for today. Can you give any advice to a self-employed entrepreneur looking for financing? Um, sometimes hard to get conventional loans being self-employed. Yeah. So it was, there some creativity? What do you suggest on that? It's the uh, capital is not necessarily an issue. They have the yep. money. It's just more about getting the loan. Yeah. It's very typical with self-employed business owners. Um, they, they typically are not that as lendable as they actually would be if they, because they, because as a business owner, you have a lot of write-offs. You have a lot of things you can write, uh, you know, write off on taxes and everything else. So at the end of the day, your income on paper right. that you're paying taxes on is a lot less than what your actual I- income is. Right. And you've got some capital and you've got some things going on. And so what happens is the bank says, ah, I don't really like your situation um, from a lending standpoint, right there, which I think is crazy personally. Like I won't get into that tangent right now. I think it's nuts that they are more comfortable with somebody with a W two job, and they feel like that's more stable than a business owner. That maybe I, I might not. I might be more likely to lend to a business owner that, but have some criteria. If you've been in business for three, five right, years, something right. like that. Have say, if you've been doing it for five years or more, you're probably you're probably yeah. pretty stable, yeah. right? Um, but anyway. Totally, totally. No, tangent. I thought you said you weren't going to get into that. I tangent. wasn't going to. So <laughs> I'm going to go back to the actual question. And so, but you're not as lendable in the eyes of the bank. So you have to say, hey, listen, I, what can I do? Usually you do have access to capital. You have the ability to earn more and be able to take and, and allocate funds, you know, toward properties. And so what you do is you go find the asset based type lender. They're very investor specific loans, DSCR loans, right? They're going to be more expensive. They're going to have, put more down. The terms are going to be worse. You're going to have, you're going to pay a point to a point and a half higher than you would on interest rates, on conventional financing. And you're going to typically have prepayment penalties, but that is a route that works, right? Uh, Remember that prepayment penalties, interest rates, all of those things are line items on a pro forma, right? They're expense items on a pro forma. They're the cost of ownership. And when we're evaluating properties and underwriting properties, we're evaluating everything, income, expenses, 
income potential, all these different things. And we have to say, okay, does this work or does not work? And sometimes properties are not going to work when you have that type of financing in place. But that financing is available. And it's been available for short term rental owners for a long time. I have personally, I have DSCR loans on some of my properties, my Cherry Lock property, I have a DSCR loan on it. Because it was easier to say, hey, listen, we're going to already be putting 25% down on this right. thing. So we put we ended up having 20%. We ended up doing a DSCR loan with 20% down. We paid a higher interest rate. And we ended up, we're, I have a five-year prepayment penalty. So, I mean, I have to pay a prepayment penalty if I refinance that or sell it in the next five years, right? And so from when I bought it, it is what it is. I underwrote it. It still worked. Yeah. The numbers the numbers penciled out and we run down that road. The, you have to have good credit. But the great part is they don't verify any income because they're looking at the asset itself right. to say, does this asset cover the debt service? Mm -hmm. What Does this asset's income cover what this loan payment is going to be. And if that's the case, they're comfortable with that. All right. Good. Okay. That's good. Good stuff. Hey, buddy. I think we had a good episode today. All yeah. right. We'll wrap it up. Let's wrap this up. Okay. We had a drink in the middle of the episode, which uh, yeah. we don't typically do. Yeah. So next time, let's make sure we, we uh, get our shit together <laughs> well, yeah. and clear our throats before yeah. we start talking. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just, you know. It mind. happens, right? Yeah, it does. All right. All right, guys. Listen, we appreciate you joining us. We know how valuable your time is. As, as always, we appreciate you spending it with us. And so first question or first favor that I ask you, not question, is we don't run ads. We don't have any sponsorships. We have the ability to do that, but we don't like people telling us what we have to talk to, talk about, sponsor, uh, support, whatever else. We like to talk about things we want to talk about. So because of that, the only way to share the show grows is if you guys share it. So share it with somebody you, you think would like to listen to these episodes. Anybody that wants to walk into the game with their eyes wide open, hear us talk about the short-term rental game, you know, make sure that you share that. The, the Vacation Rental Revolution, that is our number one goal is to help people walk into this with their eyes wide open. So if you have more than 30 seconds, like it, review it, give us a thumbs up on whatever platform you're watching or listening on. And the final most important thing I ask you at the end of every episode is to pick that one thing you can do today to start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, brother. Cheers, buddy.